rumor has it we're going undercover at the makeup counter. You know, testing just how clean those shared makeup samples really are. You've thought about this. ABC's Elizabeth Leamy is here with the results of her hidden camera test. Good morning, Eli. Yes. Do tell. Good morning. So during our undercover shopping spree, clerks told us they usually switch out their makeup samples just once a year, which means when you use them, it's kind of like sharing your cosmetics with hundreds, maybe even thousands of strangers. The allure and intrigue of a new look. It's the reason so many of us are drawn to the makeup counter. But what else could you be putting on your face along with that sparkle, glitter, and glitz? My germ detection team and I hit 10 stores in two states to find out. Armed with sterile swabs and an undercover camera, we collected samples from three categories, eyeshadow, foundation, and lipstick, 30 specimens in all. At one of our first stops, we find these fuzzy lipsticks. They rated pretty high on our gross meter, but would they be really germy too? At another store, we uncover a tactic that's meant to fight germs, but does it? Can I put it directly on? We have the lip wand. That store's solution was to scrape the lipstick off of the tube onto a little applicator, and then you use that. But they didn't sanitize the tube first. And then there's this. So they're sort of communal brushes. Most stores offered disposable applicators, but we were shocked to find one store with makeup brushes available for everyone to share. So we just had to swab one. We sent all of our swabs to NYU's microbiology department. Brace yourself for the results. First, the good news. Yeah. This lipstick was the best sample in our test. Here's why. I have a sanitizer for you. Oh, how do you do that? Um, there's rubbing alcohol right back here. Oh, it I worked. The alcohol killed all of the germs. But what about the fuzzy lipstick and the sterile applicator dipped into the <laughs> non-sterile lipstick? They both contained bacteria. And sure enough, one of our worst offenders was that communal brush. Bad enough, you double dipping, triple dipping, and who knows how many dips you do. It's a dipsy do. Yep, that brush was loaded with organisms, indicating skin bacteria and yeast. Our very worst sample isn't pretty. It came from this foundation. It was harboring loads of a strong bacteria strain that can make you sick. You just have to realize that if you have an open cut, you might not want to go that route of using makeup that has been used by other people. Even worse, one out of every five of our samples, 20% showed significant growth of mold, yeast, or fecal matter. The thought of what you could be putting on your lips left some oh shoppers God, speechless. What do you think? Others had plenty to say. I don't need the cesspool. That's crazy. I don't want that on my lips. That's so foul. I like that picture a lot. We shared our results with Linda Wells, editor-in-chief of Allure magazine. To me, makeup testers like petri dishes. I would not want to go near one. There are better ways to do it. For eyeshadow and eyeliner, use a disposable applicator and test it out on your hand instead of your eyes. For foundation, test it on your neck, away from your face and lips. As for lipstick, don't put it anywhere near your mouth. Instead, use the pad of your finger. You can't really ever know what someone else has done before you. All tips to keep ugly bacteria at bay and you looking pretty. Okay, first of all, thanks for the tips. Uh, second <laughs> of all, <laughs> yeah. So, what is the worst? What, do you have a guess? I would say lipstick, but based on I what you said. I thought that too, but actually, that's not true. No? The eyeshadow and foundation tied for the worst, and there was no difference between the most upscale of department stores and the most regular drugstore. Something to keep in mind. Yeah. Uh, I like when you go undercover like that. <laughs> Your morning gross out. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Lee.